recording one. Oh, right then, lovely to see you. Bit of sunshine out there after all the rain, so we can go and make the most of it after class, having set ourselves up for greatness. But um, a question to start with. When was the last time you uh, were grateful for something that wasn't transactional? And by that I mean it wasn't in response to being given a gift or someone doing something for you, like opening a door or maybe picking something up that you've dropped, as someone did for me in the supermarket this morning. When was the last time you were grateful for something that wasn't just transactional? And I've been thinking about it a lot after a couple of things and, and something I read. And there was, a, in this uh, newspaper article, there was a lovely Latin phrase. So excuse my pronunciation. And the phrase is gratias agire. And it was used by the Romans to do thanks. We would say to give thanks. But agire is uh, the action, it's the verb, to do. And I love that idea that, that we have to be active about gratitude. It isn't something that's maybe comes innately to us. Some people, yes, are maybe veering towards that more, more than others. Some people are naturally, I think, of that disposition. But all of us, I think, um, will be mindful to do thanks more often, in particular when it's not in response to something transactional. So it might be like this morning, waking up and thinking, oh, for goodness sake, it's raining. But then the sun comes out and thinking, oh, I'm really grateful for the fact it's now sunny. I can get out for a walk. I can do my things. So maybe for the rest of the day, it might be maybe the rest of the week, just pausing to contemplate. Maybe, you know, those little things that we can begin to stretch and exercise that gratitude muscle um, a little bit more. I've been trying it and it really does lift your mood as well. It really does kind of make you feel better which is great. So in saying that, physically, we're going to be working across the chest to open up the heart and into the hips today. So a lovely heart opening, hip opening practice and gratitude practice. You'll thank me for it, I promise. <laughs> Let's come and lie down onto our backs. Maybe give your knees a squeeze. Oh, it's still early doors, so maybe your back feels a little tight from the night's sleep. Then we'll come into a position called constructive rest. So the knees stay bent. We'll take the feet a little bit wider apart this morning than hip width and just let your knees drop against each other. Like you're making a V shape, an upended V shape. And just for this morning, let's place our hands just down on the lower belly and a hand just on your heart there. And um, go ahead and slide your fingertips towards the outside edge of your body if that's necessary to relax your elbows down on the floor. We make those little adjustments that we might need to get ourselves nice and comfortable, maybe closing the eyes. Beginning to settle into the space and the time that you've created and carved out for yourself this morning. And maybe that in itself is something that we can all be grateful for, that we have found the time to share a practice together. And we all lead busy lives. We all have things to do and pulls on our attention. Maybe a moment to be grateful for the fact that we are able to spend an hour this morning together, setting ourselves up for the rest of the day. As you begin to notice the breath this morning, rather than just thinking about your breath coming into that upper hand on your heart and the lower hand on your belly, be thinking about your whole rib cage being moved in different directions. Outward expansion, yes, we feel that upwards lift into our hands, but outwards into the ribs, maybe a little bit into your back, resting on the floor. Upper hands resting on that heart center, said to be where our sense of gratitude and thankfulness emanates from. So again, maybe actively seeking out those moments during the rest of the day and during the week where we can just pause for a moment and do thanks. So continuing with that nice steady breath, I'm just going to reach both arms up towards the ceiling with the palms facing away from you. 
and try and drop some weight into your shoulder blades so we're not lifting the upper back off the floor as you start to just wake up the wrists and the hands this morning. It's been a little bit bleak of late, a little bit damp, so let's get those joints moving one direction and then just change direction again, heavy in the shoulder blades as you reach the arms up. Lovely. And then we're going to turn the palms to face each other and bring your elbows down, 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 in by the side of the body. So your elbows and your upper arms are resting on the floor. Fingertips are pointing up towards the ceiling, like a little robot. And we'll bring the feet and the knees a little closer together, maybe hip width apart. Lovely. So as you press down into your elbows and your upper arms, start to arch your back a little bit, try and create some space between your back and the floor. And then releasing that pressure, allow your back to sink back down onto the mat. So as you inhale, you press down into your elbows and feel the pelvis tilt forward as you arch your back. And then we release. We'll do a couple more like that. So beginning just to wake up into the back, open up through the chest. So as you press your elbows down into the floor, you might notice a broadening of your collarbones. Let's do that one more time. Pressing the elbows down, down, down. Lovely. And release. We're going to start making that a little bit bigger. So this time as you press your elbows down, press into your upper arms and start to lift your hips as you press into your feet. Keep pressing down as you power those hips up and then slowly release that pressure as you roll your back back down, vertebrae by vertebrae. So inhale, the arms press down, the hips lift up, that opposing energy, and then rolling back down. Doing a few more like that, coming up as high as feels comfortable today. Trying to keep those knees on top of your ankles, feeling that nice stretch across the chest, maybe waking up with the back, nice stretch across the hips as you stretch those knees away from you. Let's do that one more time. So this time as you lift the hips, and of course there, pressing the elbows down, see if you can lift those hips a little higher. Option to stay there, or reach both arms up towards the sky, turning the palms away from you, just like we did at the beginning. An option to reach the arms back above the head. Come onto your tiptoes as you walk those heels a little closer in towards you, lifting those hips just a little bit higher. Take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, roll the spine up, back down. Keep the arms reaching back. Maybe keep the heels lifted. Lovely. And then stretch one leg out in front of you, then the other into a full body stretch. Another opportunity to circle wrists and ankles this time. Getting those joints moving. Again, changing direction, moving both ways. Lovely. And then lowering the arms, bringing the feet back in towards you. And we'll just bring your right knee up and in towards your chest, just your right knee. And then using one hand or both hands, let's start to bring the awareness to the hip as you start to circle the knee round. Just bringing your awareness to how that right hip is feeling today. It might be big movements, might be a little bit smaller and more measured if your hips feel tight. Just change direction if you've not done so already. The hand is just steering the leg round. And then coming back to the centre, holding on around the back of the leg now as we come up into a hamstring stretch. So go ahead and again, swap that into your shoulders. Or just point and flex the foot when we... Get that leg up towards the ceiling, popping a soft bend in the knee if you need to. Just exploring how that hamstring feels today. Oh, mine are tight, tight, tight. And then we'll keep the foot flexed. You're gonna bend the knee and bring your right ankle to rest on your left knee. So they're coming into a recline pigeon. And this morning, you might just want to press that right knee away from you. Gently rock from side to side or lifting your head, lifting your shoulders. So you lift that left foot off the floor. Holding on around the back of your left thigh, we'll bring that right shin a little closer in towards you. So we're trying to bring that right foot towards us and the right knee away from you. As you find a little stretch or maybe a deep stretch ooh, in the hip, tight on my right side today. Ooh. Okay, so we're going to come into a little twist from here. So keeping the legs as they are, we'll bring the arms out to the side level with your shoulders. I'm bringing both legs over to the left. So we're aiming to bring that right knee down towards the floor. Maybe use your left hand on your top knee or thigh to guide those knees down a little more. And if that's too much stretch, uncross your ankle. Just bring your feet and your knees together. 
come into a more gentle twist all together. Breathing into wherever you feel. I can feel that into the outside of my hip, maybe coming up into my back a little bit there. And releasing the arms, let's roll all the way back, bringing those legs back through the middle and uncross everything. Give both knees a nice squeeze, one hand on each knee, have a little rock, have a little roll. And then squeezing those knees down in towards your belly, option to lift your nose towards your knees, sliding the shoulders away from the ears. And then lower the head, lower the shoulders. Let's do that twice more, breathing in. And breathing out knees to chest, maybe that little lift of nose to knees, if you wish. If not, keep the head and shoulders on the floor for this last one. Waking up both ends of the spine there, giving them a nice stretch. And this time we'll bring the right foot to the floor, both hands on the left knee as you bring your head and shoulders down. Lovely, so one hand or both hands, we start those little knee circles. And this side might feel a little different to the other. So guiding the leg round in one direction, try to let your lower leg be nice and heavy. And then we'll just change direction there. So just moving the head of the thigh bone in the hip socket there, quite literally oiling the joint. And then ready for that hamstring stretch, holding behind the leg, let's take that left leg up. Oh, might be a little different. So point and flex, might just notice I brought a little tension back into my shoulders and into my face there. So just try and relax your upper body as we work the legs there. And then with a flexed foot, ankle over opposite knee. So this time again, left hand might press the knee away and you might stay there, that little rock. Or lift the right foot off the floor, holding on around the back of your right thigh. Come all the way back down and again, you might just want to add a little bit of movement there or keep still, whatever works for you. Again, we're trying to press the left knee away from you as you bring that left ankle towards you. And ready for that twist. Legs stay as they are as we bring the arms out to the side. So this time we bring the knees over to the right, aiming to bring that left knee down towards the floor. Maybe using that right hand to give it a little bit of help. You can pick up your head and look over that other arm if that feels nice. Bring a little bit of rotation into your neck this morning. Lovely. And then releasing the arms, coming all the way back up through the middle, uncrossing everything. Hands on the knees. This time we'll widen the knees, bring the big toes together and take the legs round in a circle. So we'll just get into the hips, a little release as you just circle round in one direction. And then round the opposite way, a little massage there. Lovely. Either rolling to one side or holding behind the knees, a little momentum woo, to cut all the way up to seated. You can pop yourself up on a cushion if you're finding it a little bit more uncomfortable to sit up today. So whatever works for you. I'm going to sit cross-legged, but it really doesn't matter. Somewhere where you feel nice and comfortable. Fingertips binding the floor, soften the shoulders away from the ears. Let's take a nice deep breath in, reaching up and exhale, hands to heart. Keep pressing the palms together as they travel down. A little bit of energy between the elbows there. Inhale, reaching up. And again, sending the elbows that left to right. So again, just beginning to wake up those muscles of the chest. Last time, inhale. And exhale, coming down. Ready to change, sweeping the arms up. Let's come into a side stretch over to the right. So bringing the left arm over the top of the head, a little softness in that left, in that right elbow, as you bump your ribs over to the left a little more. Now this top arm, this left arm, now drop the shoulder, reach that left arm in front of the face, all the way in front of you. And then hand by the hip, we circle that right arm all the way up. Again, just finding that nice stretch as you bump the hips over to the right. Let's see if we can move with the breath. So we'll take an inhale. And as you exhale, circle that right arm in front. Left arm takes over as you inhale, opening the chest. And exhale to swap. So a little rolling side bend there. You might tuck your chin in as you draw that arm up and over the head if that's feeling good. If not, you can always keep the gaze down towards the floor. Oh, that's a lovely one, just to stretch out the upper back. Let's do one more each way, because that just feels so nice. <laughs> All the way up. And last time, over to the left. Beautiful. 
coming all the way back up to seated. Let's reach the arms out to the side and just turn the thumbs back behind you as you flip the palms up towards the ceiling. So draw the thumbs back, see if you can brighten the heart forward, pull the chest forwards. And then turning the back of the hands forward, so we're going to round the back and bring the back of the hands towards each other, almost like you're diving into a swimming pool. So as you inhale, we pull the thumbs back, we open the chest. And exhale as you dive forwards. A couple more times, so opening the chest as you pull the thumbs back. And then stretching between the shoulder blades as you exhale. Let's do that one more time, inhale. And exhale, holding forwards now. Bring your fingertips down towards the floor. Maybe walk your hips back a little bit as you take a little forward fold there. So not worrying how far you come down. And you might have your feet crossed just at your ankles or you might take your feet a little further apart. And if you've got your feet a little further apart, maybe flex your ankles and you might feel a deeper stretch in the outer hip. And keep drawing back through the hips and the sit bones as you reach the fingertips forward. Lovely. And then walking the hands back, just swap the legs over if you've got them crossed. Might feel a little strange now. Lovely. Inhale, reaching up. And this time as you exhale, we'll take a twist to the right. So one hand directly in front, the other behind you. Lovely. Inhaling up. And over to the other side as you split the arms, beginning to bring that rotation up through the spine. Let's do one more each way. And so hips stay nice and steady. And you can feel that lovely rotation through the upper back, the middle back, those two most immobile parts of the spine. And then coming all the way back up through the middle, bringing the arms out to the side. Now you can either repeat that little one we did before, thumbs pull back and then diving forwards, or a little bigger, bring the fingertips to touch behind you. Come onto your fingertops as you press down with the fingers, we lift the chest. And then reaching forwards, touching the floor in front of you, rounding the back. So as you inhale, lifting the chest, fingertops touch behind you. And as you exhale, reach the arms in front. Remember, you can always stick with arms out to the side, doing that little diving position you did. And exhale, so pulling belly button to spine. Let's do that one more time, inhale. So this next time you bring the fingertips down in front of you, pause in that forward fold again, maybe adjust your hips, walk your bottom back, slide those feet further apart if you want a deeper stretch. And again, you can flex your feet, see if that adds anything to the sensation of stretch or not. Stretching out through the side body. And as you walk your hands back towards you, I'm going to roll over my ankles to come onto all fours, but that doesn't serve every knee and ankle in this world. So find your way onto all fours nice and safely with your hands onto your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips there. So we'll flatten any toes that are tucked under so you can press down lightly onto your shins and the tops of the feet, pressing into the palms of the hands so you feel that lovely strong tabletop position to begin with. And then as you inhale, start to lift your hips. Up, let your belly dip, pull your chest forwards as we come into that lovely cow pose. And then exhale, rounding like an angry cat. Then moving with breath, inhale, imagine you want to drag your wrists back towards your knees. So it's almost like that little tug of your heart forwards. And then we stretch the back of the heart. Maybe closing the eyes here as you just, again, feel that lovely rhythmical stretching of the front and the back of the body. The next time you're in the angry cat position with a rounded back pause and sink your bottom back towards your heels, take a child pose. And see if you can bring your elbows and your forearms down to the floor in two parallel lines. So start to add a bit of flow. So as you inhale, peeling back up onto all fours, cow pose, arch the back. Exhale, rounding into your child pose, bringing those elbows down. So inhale forwards and up, so chest bursting forwards. And exhale, sliding the hips back. A couple more times if that works for you. You can always stay up on all fours, just do your cat and cow this morning. This time as you come on to all fours, we'll pause there. Bump your hips to the right, draw that right shoulder back as you look 
over the right shoulder towards the back of the mat. Come back through the middle. And then swap sides, hips to the left, draw the left shoulder back as you look to the back of the mat. Inhale to center. Exhale, take a child pose. We're gonna to add together. So inhale, peeling the elbows up. And as you exhale, look over your right shoulder as you bump the hips to the right. Back through the center, inhale. Over to the left, exhale. Inhale. And exhale down into that child pose, bringing the forearms down twice more, inhale. Take that little wag of your tail to the right. So you feel that nice shortening through the waist. And then over to the left. Inhale to center. And bottom to heels into that child pose. Last time, inhale. So one side of the waist gets a lovely shortening. And the other side lengthens and then we swap sides. Inhale to center. As you come back into your child pose this time, walk the hands forwards, maybe come onto the tops of your fingers. Take a little heat up the wrists as you pull your hips back towards your heels and stretch those arms forwards, trying to close those armpits off towards the floor there. Breathing into the back and the sides of the body. And then coming back onto all fours, hands under shoulders, knees under your hips. So try to keep both hip bones pointing towards the floor. You can slide the right leg back behind you, lifting it up level with the hip. We'll take an inhale and exhale, knee to chest, nose to knee. Again, rounding the back. Extend the leg, head comes forwards, take an inhale. And exhale, squeeze everything in. We did that twice more. I hope you didn't have a big breakfast, inhale. <laughs> and exhale, rounding up nose to knee. Last time, inhale. This time as you exhale, bring that knee in towards your chest, pause. Press into your hands and see if you can squeeze your heel towards your bottom. Lovely, and then we're gonna shoot that right leg out to the right, lining up your big toe roughly with your knee. Right hand comes on top of your left hand. You're gonna slide that right arm up the left arm, across the chest and open up into a lovely twist. You can maybe pull that top shoulder back, and then pushing off the floor, we're going to come all the way up and bring the arms out to the side into gate pose. Remember, you can always bend that knee if you need to. We'll take an inhale there. And as you exhale, nice side bend over the top. Inhale to center. And as you exhale, right arm alongside the ear and get that lovely diagonal stretch. So don't worry about your fingertips touching the floor. Inhale through the middle, over the top. So inhale to center. So again, we're just aiming for that lovely long diagonal line. Some fingertops might reach the floor. Mine don't with my little arms. Once more over to the right. And this time as you come over to the left, if you want to go ahead and bring the hand down, extending the arm up or bringing it alongside your ear, feel free, pressing the hips gently forwards. Lovely. And then slowly, slowly, circling that right arm down, bringing both hands in front of you. I'm going to take that right leg all the way back behind you and pushing up into your downward facing dog. Have a little walk out through the feet, a little pedal, pedal there. Or oh, stretching out the back of the legs. And just bending your right knee and just press your left heel down towards the floor, send your ribcage back towards your thighs as we open up into the back of the leg. And then floating that right leg up behind you will take an inhale and exhale. Step will help it fall. It's top of the mat. So go ahead and lower the back knee and flatten the feet. Inhale as you sweep the arms forwards and up. And exhale, palms up, drawing the arms down by the side. Again, they might travel back behind you. Inhaling up. So arms might come back a little ways as we stretch into the chest. Lovely, twice more. Inhale. And exhale, lovely, last time, inhale. And this time as you exhale, bring both hands down on the inside of your front foot. So I'm gonna tuck my left foot under, pick up the knee and just walk the knee back a little way. So my knee is well behind my hip there, flatten the toes. And squeezing that right knee against your upper arm. So you might just choose to stay there with your knee against your upper arm. Or as you inhale, let that right knee roll out to the side. And as you exhale, squeeze it in towards your upper arm. So as you inhale, right knee opens, getting a nice stretch in the hip, and exhale, squeeze that knee 
in, lovely, a couple more times. It's like a little butterfly opening and closing its wing. You'd want to stretch and strengthen the hip. And so the next time you've got your knee hugged in against your upper arm, keeping the right hand on the floor, we're going to peel the left arm up so it might not come up very far. We're going to hip stretch and a little bit of pass. Oh, slowly release. Bring that foot to the middle of the mat between your hands, come up onto your fingertips as you tuck the toes, take an inhale. Exhale, let's stretch it out, move the hips back. Chest comes forwards, take an inhale. And exhale, slide those hips back. One more time, just stretching it all out. Oh, got a clicky hip. And then bending that front knee, bring both hands once again to the inside of the front foot. Sliding or stepping back onto all fours, take an inhale, bottom to heels, exhale, take a child pose. Option to stay there or start moving back onto all fours, inhale, down onto your tummy with our little floor flow, exhale, peeling the chest up, breath in, hips to heels, exhale. Let's do that a couple more times if that works for you. If you want to have a little rest in child pose, you feel free to stay there, that's no problem. If not, that little floor vinyasa before we do anything bigger. One more time, inhale, chest comes forward and then hug those elbows in, exhale, all the way up. And bottom to heels, exhale. This time we'll come all the way up. Let's stay down on the tummy, so make your way down onto your tummy. We're gonna take the hands nice and wide off your mat, come up onto the tops of your fingers and your elbows are pointing up towards the ceiling. Forehead on the floor. Now imagine you're leading with the back of the neck. So as you inhale, lift the head, lift the chest. Chin comes up at the top of the inhale as you look forwards and exhale, stretching the chest forwards and down. So back of the neck leading to the head hangs. Inhale. And exhale, it's called a swan-necked cobra. So last time, inhale. And exhale to lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Hands under the shoulders, come back onto all fours. Realigning those hands under shoulders, knees under the hips, and we'll try that on the other side. So at this time, as you slide left leg back, again, keeping the hips pointing down towards the floor, we'll take an inhale. Knee to chest, nose to knee, exhale, press it to your hands, inhale. And a big squeeze into the center as you exhale. Again, twice more, if that feels good. Last time. So this next time, knee to chest, pause, press into your hands. If you can dome your upper back a little more as you squeeze that heel in towards your bottom. And then we'll shoot that left leg out to the side. Lovely. So this time it's left hand on top of right hand. You know, open up that left arm so you're reaching the arm up. And again, that top arm might come up and back a little further. Now pushing into the underneath hand, come all the way up through the middle, reaching the arms out to the side into our gate pose. Remember, you can bend that knee if you need to. Let's take an inhale. Oh, with the top as you exhale, keep those hips pressed forwards through the middle as you inhale. And again, that lovely diagonal line, so don't worry about touching the floor. Inhale. In fact, if you don't touch the floor, you've got to work a little bit harder because you can't use it to push your weight up from. So... Oh, I'm having to work harder because of my little Tyrannosaurus Rex arms over the top. And this next time, if you want to go ahead and bring that right hand down, you might keep the arm up or extend it alongside your ear, lifting your ear towards your upper arm. That's it. And then bringing both hands back down in front of you. And it slides that left leg behind you and find our way back into our downward facing dog. And again, having a chance to have a little pedal out through the feet there before bending just your left knee. So we're stretching out through the back of that right leg, rib cage to thighs. And then left leg floats up behind you. We'll take an inhale. Exhale, step will help it forward. It's a long way, so give it a hand if it doesn't get there. Flatten the back foot, sweep the arms forwards and up, breath in. Palms up, chest open, exhale. And we want to open up through the chest, inhale. So as you drop the hips forward, you're getting a nice stretch in that opposite hip. In that right hip. Lovely. So this next time we'll sweep the arms up. And as you exhale, hands come to the inside of that front foot. 
So again, I'm just going to tuck my back foot under, have a little walk of the knee back and bring the knee down. So it's up to you as to how deep that stretch can be. You can always bring the knee forwards a little bit. So hugging your knee against your upper arm. So just bring your chest forwards, let that hip drop. And then adding that little butterfly wing as you inhale. Woo, left knee rolls open. And exhale to squeeze it in. So you can always keep your foot flat to the floor and just keep hugging your knee in towards your upper arm if you don't like this little rotation. It doesn't work for your ankle or your hip. Doing one more if you're with me. And then keeping that knee secured against your upper arm, keeping the left hand on the floor. This time it's the right arm that lifts up. So it's a lot of balance required to lift that arm. So don't worry. Coming all the way down, bringing the foot between your hands as you tuck the back toes under for that little hip uh, hamstring stretch. Take an inhale. Move the hips back as you exhale. Oh, that feels good. Inhale, rocking forwards. And exhale, rocking back. Oh, that feels nice, stretching it all out. And this next time we'll bend that front knee, bring both hands to the inside of your front foot, and we'll find our way back onto all fours as you inhale. Exhale, taking that child pose. Again, staying there or rolling with me, inhale to all fours. And exhale, rolling down onto your belly. Coming back up, take an inhale. And bottom to heels, twice more if that feels good. Remember, if you need to have a little rest in child pose or this doesn't work for your shoulders, your chest, then feel free to stay in child pose. One more if you're with me. Lovely. Building up a little bit of heat, a little bit of warmth as we start to flow with breath. And this next time we'll find our way down onto our tummies. So go ahead and join us there if you are still in child pose. Arms out to the side again, up onto the tops of the fingers. You can always bring the hands down, but I think just coming up onto the tops of your fingers gives you a little bit more height. So again, that head hangs as you come up through the middle, inhaling, and then extending the chest forwards and down as you lower. So pressing into your fingers, a little swan-necked or open-hearted cobra as it's sometimes called. One more time, inhale. And Exhale, lovely, hands under the shoulders, push back up all fours, and we'll find downward facing dog. This time from your downward dog, start to walk your feet towards the top of the mat, towards your hands, and we'll bend the knees nice and generously, cradle those elbows, allow the body just to melt forwards, having a little sway. Oh. And then coming to stillness, really bend those knees so you can bring your fingertips to the floor in front of your feet or bring your hands above your knees if that doesn't work for you today. So bending the knees, start to straighten just the right leg, pushing the hips straight back behind you and take the right arm out and up. Again, don't worry how high that arm comes. And then coming back to the centre, swapping sides. So imagine you're sending that left hip straight back behind you. And lowering the arms once more with breath, right leg straightens, up with that right arm as you inhale, and back down, exhale. Last time on the other side, nice stretch for the outer hip. Ooh. And coming all the way down, keeping the knees bent, let the arms dangle as you roll your way up, up, up. And have a nice shoulder roll at the top. Ah, oh, lovely. So coming to the top of your mat, I'll come this side so I can mirror you. So feet underneath your hips, we'll bring the hands to the heart. So just have a little check out with your feet, knowing that whatever happens with our feet then travels up to our knees and our hips. So if you've got your feet turned out slightly or rolling in or out on your feet, you're going to really affect uh, the state of your knees and your hips. So firm up your foundations, hands to heart. You lift on up from that firm base. Little press of the hips forwards, tucking the tailbone down. Here we go. So as we inhale, reach the arms up. We go into my spider plant. Exhale, come all the way down. It's having lots of babies. It's quite prolific. <laughs> Hands to shins or thighs, come forwards and up halfway. And exhale, release some lovely half sun salutes. Rising up, inhale. And hands to heart. Exhale twice more again, just building up a little bit of warmth. Inhale. Exhale, heart leads the way as you come down. 
shoulders away from ears as you press off against the legs into that lovely flat back and then fold back in. Rising up, inhale and hands to heart, exhale, lovely last time, here we go. Big breath in and then coming all the way down. Lifting up halfway, pressing off against the legs. And then coming down, down, down. Last time we'll rise on up, pressing into those feet. Hands coming to heart. Okay, adding on, sweeping the arms out and up. This time as you exhale, swim them behind you so you can interlace your hands. Palms are open. You can keep a nice bend in the elbows or if your chest feels okay and shoulders are okay, we can straighten the arms a little bit more. Press the hips forwards, maybe even lift your chin. And you can stay there or bend your knees and roll the body down over the legs, taking the arms up and over. If that doesn't work for you, just bring your fingertips to the floor into a forward fold. Lovely, hands coming down onto your bottom and then fingertips to floor, shins or thighs, lifting up halfway with an inhale. And as you exhale, take a big step back with your right foot and turn to face the long edge of your mat. So a little pivot on the feet. And then the heels and the toes out ever so slightly. We're gonna rise on up, straighten the legs, arms sweep up. Exhaling hands to heart, bend the knees down is that lovely goddess. Sweeping the arms out and up, breath in. And hands to heart, exhale, lovely. Couple more times. So imagine you're sliding your back down that imaginary wall. So try not to send the bottom back behind you. Beautiful. This time we're going to sweep the arms all the way out and up. Lovely. And as you exhale, turning the right toes forwards, left toes to the long edge of the mat, we'll find ourselves into a warrior one, a warrior two, sorry. So you've got your right toes pointing forwards. Take an inhale there. And as you exhale, see if you can sink into that front knee. Beautiful. Front palm turns up. Inhale as you reach forwards. And as you exhale, right arm over the top as we reverse our warrior. And then inhale to center. Right hand or forearm to thigh. Left arm up and over. Inhaling into your warrior. And exhale, coming all the way up and over. Beautiful. Inhale to center. Right hand or forearm to thigh or coming down a little bit lower towards your shin or your ankle. Lovely, inhale. Last time to reverse as you exhale. And this time we'll come into our warrior, inhale. And as you exhale, take a big tick-tock of the hands down. Frame that front foot. Back knee lifted or lowered as you take that right arm up towards the sky, taking a twist. I'm bringing both hands down. And bring that right leg all the way up and back into a three-legged dog. And then bending the knee, drop your heel to your bottom and press your rib cage back towards your thigh. So if you want a little bit of challenge here, come on to the tips of your right hand, the tips of your fingers on your right hand. See if that adds a little bit of challenge there. Beautiful, straightening that right leg back behind you. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, roll the body forwards to plank, lowering the foot as you do so. And as you inhale, press into your hands. See if you can dome your upper back. And as you exhale, come down, down, down onto your belly. Pressing into the tops of the feet. Coming up into your cobra or maybe a little upward dog. And as you exhale, we'll all meet in downward facing dog. Just taking a breath or two in that downward dog, powering your ribcage towards your thighs, stretching the heels down towards the floor. And then bending both knees, look forwards. And as you inhale, walk, step or hop to the top of your mat. And exhale to fold. Hops aren't obligatory. Rise up to stand, take an inhale. Hands coming down to heart. Exhale, lovely. Should we try the other side, team? Inhale up. Exhale as you swim the hands behind and interlace them. Knuckles draw down, heart lifts, we'll take an inhale. And exhale, bend your knees. And as you come down into that forward fold this time, feel free to start to straighten off the legs a little bit. Ooh, and then we'll wake those hamstrings up. And then releasing the hands, fingertips to floor, shins or thighs. Inhale, lift the chest. And as you exhale, left leg, take a big step back. So again, we'll take that little pivot on the feet, turning to the long edge of your mat. Heels in, toes out ever so slightly, so you can rise on up, 
Inhale as you sweep the arms up into that goddess. Exhale, getting those hips uh, nice and open. Inhale as you push the knees out towards the little toes. So if you find your chest is coming forwards, maybe don't come down quite so deeply. Try and keep that lovely plumb line through the body. Inhale, reaching up. And exhale, coming down. So one more time, we're going to reach up, take an inhale. This time as you exhale, bend the knees and bring both hands onto your knees. Push the bottom back now and we can bring the chest forwards. Looks like you're about to do the hacker, <laughs> that rugby dance. So you're going to straighten that right arm, push the right knee away from you. Let that shoulder roll forwards as you look over your left shoulder. Inhale to centre. Exhale, swapping sides. So that left shoulder rolls in. Inhale through centre. So right arm straightens as you press that knee away from you a little bit more actively, back through the middle. And exhale, last time with the left. Lovely, coming back to centre, sweeping the arms up, take an inhale into our warrior two, turning the left foot forwards this time. And so we've got the other leg powering forwards now as you sink a little deeper, keep pressing into the outside edge of that back foot, body nice and straight. Turning the front palm, reach forwards, take an inhale. Left arm up and over as you reverse. Inhale to center. Into our side angle, so forearm or hand to thigh. Again, that lovely diagonal line. Inhale through the middle. Let's just flow, building up. Ooh, a little bit of heat in the legs. Inhale to center. If you want to bring that left hand down a little lower towards your shin or your ankle, you've got to drop into your hips. Back through the middle, inhale. Last time to reverse into your warrior, inhaling. And as we exhale, big tick tock of the hands down as you pivot on that back foot. Left arm lifts up, so you're turning towards that front knee as you inhale. And exhale, bring the hands down. Left leg goes up and back into your three legged dog. Join us there. And then bending that top knee, and take that left knee up towards the sky. So you're stacking the hips like a little dog peeing on a lamppost. And if you want that balanced challenge, you come onto the tops of your fingers on your left hand. Lovely. And we'll straighten the leg all the way back behind you. Take an inhale. Roll the body forwards to plank as you exhale, lowering the foot. As you inhale, press into your hands, dome your back. And we'll lower down, down, down. Exhale. Downward dog or a little upward dog if that's part of your practice. We'll all meet in downward facing dog. Take a breath or two there as you stretch out through the back seam of the body. Then bending the knees, look forwards. And as you inhale, walk, step, or hop, top of the mat into your flat back. And fold as you exhale. Rising on up, big breath in. Hands coming to heart, exhale, pause. Let the breath settle, maybe closing the eyes for a moment. Ah, beautiful. That's woken us up, hasn't it? So again, being quite firm about your foundations now that your feet are facing forwards and underneath your hips, so you bring your hands to your hips, getting ready for a little bit of balance. So if you're feeling wibbly wobbly, you know you can always use the wall or I'll give you lots of options because balance certainly changes from day to day with many of us. I'm trying to find a, an even place on the floor. That, that, sounds, that feels a bit right. So let's pick up the right heel and you might just want to stay here. So just be careful you're not bumping that hip out to the side, pulling up nice and tall or reaching down, holding onto that right knee, bringing knee to chest rather than chest to knee. And then from there, finding your way into your tree pose today. Remember, you can use the floor, using your shin or bringing the foot above the knee. Again, we're aiming to open that right knee out to the side. Lovely. And then moving slowly, a big sweep up into a lovely open V. Shoulders away from the ears, reaching the arms up. If you're moving, that's fine. We're just swaying. Swaying in the breeze, bringing the hands to the heart. Now you might just want to bring your right toes to the floor in front of your left toes or right ankle over left knee, just as we did at the beginning in that recline pigeon. And either staying there or starting to bend your supporting leg, sending the bottom back, bringing the chest forwards, keeping that knee squeezed out to the side. 
option, reach the arms forwards and really send those fingertips forwards as you draw the hips back, back, back. Beautiful balance, everyone. Hands to heart, I'm gonna rise on up, picking up that right knee, tucking your right foot behind your left foot or just bringing the feet hip width. Left hand to hip, right arm circles up, a little softness in the knee as you take that lovely half moon stretch out for the outside of the hip. And then we'll come up through the middle, stepping the feet apart, have a little pad side to side. Woo, how does that feel? Let's try that on the other side. So again, as you pick up your left heel, making sure that the hips don't swing out to the side. So sitting up nice and standing up nice and tall. And you might stay there. Or again, if you've got to lean forward to catch your knee, standing up nice and tall as you bring that knee up. And then slowly find your way to tree pose. Might be different on this side. I'm trying to avoid the knee joint itself. It will just destabilize you. It won't hurt your knee. It will just destabilize you. So opening up that left knee. And again, a slow circle up if you wish, reaching the fingertips up towards the sky, lovely. And then hands coming to heart. Again, option to bring left toes just to the floor or ankle over knee. Oh, more would be wobbly on this side. So you might just stay there or we start to bend the supporting legs, sending the hips back, reaching the arms forwards. And that flying pigeon, woo, this is my wobbly, wobbly side. Lovely, and then straightening up, hands to heart, picking up that left knee and stepping left foot behind right foot or just keeping the feet hip width. Right hand to hip, soften the knees as you sweep the arm over the top of the head. And coming all the way back, woo, separate the feet and give the legs a little shake, shake. So making sure you're at the top of your mats. Let's sweep the arms all the way out and up. Take an inhale and then down over the legs. Exhale. Last time to lift up halfway. And then stepping back into a downward dog, this time taking your feet a little bit wider apart. Dropping down onto hands and knees. Again, your knees might be a little wider. Then pointing the big toes together. Taking a little child pose there with the knees wide. If that doesn't work for your hips, keep them parallel. Just settle there for a moment, arms extended, keeping the shoulders away from your ears. And you might just want to stay there or adding a little stretch coming onto the tips of your fingers on your right hand so you can feed your left arm underneath your right arm. Draw that shoulder away from the ear as you just come into a little passive thread needle now. Easy breaths. Carefully swapping sides, so tips of the fingers of your left hand, right arm underneath left arm. Lovely. Now then slowly bringing both arms back in front of you. So you come up onto all fours, bringing the knees underneath the hips. Shifting the weight forwards, we'll come down onto our tummies, making a little pillow for your forehead now. Resting your head on your hands, bring your right heel in towards your bottom. With a flex foot, you might just stay there. You can feel that that's building up strength in the back of the leg, or if you can, reach around with the same hand, right hand, and using that hand around the ankle, bring that heel in towards your bottom. Knees are parallel. And stretching the knee away from the top of the hip. If you want more, just press the front of your hips down into your mat a little bit more firmly. Just breathing into the front of that right thigh. Lovely. And then carefully swapping sides. So this time left heel comes in. So you might just stay there, flexed foot or catching around the top of the foot. And then release. Now we're going to do that one more time with a little addition if you wish. So right heel coming in, right hand reaching round. And if you want a little bit more, reach the left arm out in front of you. 
with your palm flat to the floor. Start to slide the left hand in towards you as you lift your chest up off the mat so you're looking forwards. And maybe kick your right foot into your right hand so your knee lifts a little bit off the floor. So chest and knee lifting, don't worry if your knee doesn't lift any. And then slowly release that half bow pose. And then we'll swap sides. So left heel coming in, you might just stay there, resting your head on your right hand, your right arm in front of you. Start to lift your chest so that hand slides back towards you, pushing foot into hand. Maybe your knee lifts, maybe it doesn't, that's okay. And then slowly release head on your hands. Bend your knees so your toes are up towards the ceiling and just have a little windscreen wiper action going on as you rock from side to side there. Lovely. And then extending the legs back behind you so you can push up onto all fours. Bring your knees, your ankles together. Swish your feet round to one side. Drop your hips down and stretch your legs out in front of you. Lovely. So have a little bounce of the legs again. If you find that you're really kind of sitting towards the back of your hips, uh, back of your pelvis, popping something underneath your bottom, a little cushion or a block will help just tip your pelvis forwards for that forward fold. So inhaling, arms lift up. As you come down into your forward fold, bend your knees as much as you need to this morning. Maybe close your eyes there so you're not tempted to have a little peep at whatever anyone else is doing. So you can really just allow that stretch to be. Just what you need this morning. Just what your hamstring is prepared to give you and <laughs> being grateful for that. And slowly, slowly coming all the way up, bringing the right heel in towards you. So we come into a little twist, so foot on the inside, on the outside. Or you can lean and hook that left heel round. So your choice, somewhere where you can feel that you're nice and balanced across your sit bones and you can sit up nice and tall there. So left hand or elbow gives that knee a squeeze. Take a big circle with your right arm. Fingertips just behind you onto the floor. Try not to lift that right buttock off the floor, so drop some weight into your hip. If you want a little bit more, you're going to reach your left arm up. So palm is facing towards the right. You're going to slot your left elbow just on the outside of your right knee. And you can either have your palm facing forwards in that very kind of typical yoga pose, or I kind of find it nicer to bring my left hand onto my right shoulder. If that doesn't work for you, just keep the elbow or, elbow or the hand on your right knee. Lovely, slowly releasing. Come back through the middle and just take a little twist in the opposite direction. If for some reason I just find it, it's sort of uncomfortable to have my arm raised in midair, I'm much, much nicer to rest it on my body. And slowly release, extend the legs and we'll try that on the other side. So left heel coming in, you can keep the foot there, you can cross it over. Rule of thumb, bring your big toe down onto the mat or hook your right heel round and make sure you can sit up nice and tall. So right hand or elbow brings the knee in and it's a big circle with the left arm. So we'll just keep that right hand or elbow on the knee initially as we find that twist, finding that rotation through the spine. And again, that might be where you stay. Or right arm sweeps up, so the palm is facing towards the left and you slot, you might have to lean forward, so your elbow to the outside of the left knee. And sitting up nice and tall, arm might be facing to the left, or again, I'm going to bring my right hand onto my left shoulder. Remember, all of that is an option. Whatever we're doing with that right hand, let's slowly release, come back through the middle. Make a little twist in the opposite direction. Oh, that feels nice. And then really stretch the legs out. If you're in a cooler room and you want to pop a jumper on, feel free. As you come down onto your back, bringing those knees in towards your chest. Ah, we'll rock from side to side. Lovely. And then bringing the left foot down to the floor. 
Let's bring that right knee up and in towards your chest. Holding on around the back of the leg, up into that little hamstring stretch. Once more, foot flexed. And then hooking ankle over the opposite knee. Just lifting up head and shoulders. So again, we can just take that final recline pigeon. Feel free to keep the left foot on the floor. Now option this time as you try and press that right knee away from you is either to relax that left heel down towards your bottom or extend that left leg up towards the sky. So we're getting an extra hamstring stretch there. Whatever works for you. Lovely. Slowly, slowly, if you've got that left leg extended, bend the knee and we'll all bring the foot down to the floor, arms out to the side level with the shoulders. And this time we're going to cross your right knee over your left knee. If this doesn't work for you, bring both feet to the floor, hip width apart. If you cross the legs, just move your hips over to the right a little bit. Come on to the tips of the toes of the left foot as you tip the knees to the right. So again, you might bring those knees up towards your chest and use that left hand on your top knee. You might decide you want to uncross your legs altogether if that doesn't work for you. Quite a deep twist there, rinsing out the back and into the hips. Lovely, and then releasing, bringing the arms out to the side, bringing those knees back through the middle so you can uncross, feet to the floor, and just bring those hips squarely back onto the mat. We'll try that on the other side, so left knee comes in, up with the leg, Flex in the foot as you hook ankle over knee. So as you find that reclined pigeon, remember you can always keep your right foot on the floor and just rock or lifting yourself up, holding on around the back of the leg. And again, getting nice and comfortable there. If comfort is a word one can apply to reclined pigeon. And if you can take that right leg up, if that adds something to the stretch, so we're getting an additional hamstring stretch there. That's a little version some people like. See how that feels there. And then if you've got the leg extended, bending the knee, so we can all bring the right foot down to the floor, arms out to the side. Option one, you bring both feet to the floor, or this time left leg crosses quite tightly over right leg. Nudge your bottom over to the left, come onto the tips of the toes of that right foot, and then drop both knees over to the right. So again, you might bring those knees up a little more, you might use that right hand on your top knee or thigh. Gently bringing the knees down towards the floor. And slowly releasing, bringing the knees back in towards the chest. The feet underneath you, just bring those hips back to the middle of the mat. And then extend one leg and then the other, reach both arms back above the head. I just have a lovely full body stretch there. Maybe have a little wiggle into one side, then the other side, so you're really freeing up some space. I can either just roll the toes out to the side as you lower the arms down by the side of the body, just preparing for a few minutes of quietude, or go ahead and re-bend your knees, walk your feet back towards you, taking them nice and wide. So again, we can end just how we began in that constructive rest with your knees propping against each other. I'm just going to sit up so I can talk to you. If you want to place a hand on the chest, a hand on the belly, just as you did at the beginning, feel free. Maybe closing the eyes again for a moment. And maybe finishing as we began with that moment to do thanks. Gratias Ajiro. Sounds like something out of Harry Potter, doesn't it? <laughs> but maybe there's something that's happened to you today, that you noticed today, that you can be grateful for. Maybe something that isn't transactional. In the world around you.
So as we start to think about moving forwards into the rest of the day, we just start by bringing a little bit of movement into your fingers and toes. Maybe a little roll across the back of your head from side to side. Feel free to slowly unfurl into that full body stretch if that feels nice. That's what serves the body today. And slowly bringing the knees back in towards your chest. A little rock, a little roll maybe. Let that rocking just take you over to lie on one side. And then come up to seated when you're ready. There's no rush. Ah. Let's bring the hands together at the heart, thumbs to your breastbone. Just allow your chin to drop down towards your fingertops. Lifting your heart one last time towards your thumbs. And we'll close by taking a lovely deep breath in, sweeping the arms out and up. And as you exhale, hands to heart, and I'm as ever grateful as I always am for you for showing up this morning. And continuing to share a practice with me. So thank you for that. Namaste. Thank you, thank you. Remember, gritty is a genie. <laughs> thank you.